This is the summarization session of this chapter, Ranga's Marriage. Ranga was the son of the accountant and they, he lived in Hoshali, a village in the former Mysore state, right? Ranga was sent to Bangalore for pursuing his further education. Now that time it was a big deed of a boy going outside the village for education. So when he came back, people gathered around his house to have a look whether the city life has brought a change in the boy or not, right? So how the narrator helps Ranga to get a suitable girl for himself and how he made him marry the girl to fall in love, how he made him fall in love with the girl. That's all the story about Ranga's marriage, right? Let's start. Aman, please start reading. The story Ranga's marriage is located in a Hosal Hali, a village in a former Mysore state, now a part of Karnataka. Ten years ago, the village didn't have any many people who knew English. The village accountant's son, Ranga, was the first one to be sent to Bangalore to study. A decade ago, the use of English language was not widespread in narrator's language. Village. That was why Ranga's homecoming was a great event. People rushed to his doorstep, announcing that Ranga, who had gone to Bangalore, for his studies had come back. They flocked together to have a look. The narrator too went and stood in the courtyard. Seeing so many people there, Ranga came out with a smile on his face. Everybody was surprised to see that Ranga was the same as he had been six months ago. When he had first left the village, once they realized that Ranga was unchanged physically, the crowd of people slowly disappeared. Only the narrator, Shyama, continued to stand there. After everyone had gone, the narrator asked Rangappa how he was. Ranga noticed him, came near him and greeted him respectfully. Okay. Ranga... Wait, please wait. Now... There was no change in Ranga even when after he came back from the city. He was the same boy, same village boy. He was very courteous and respectful and greeted everybody respectfully. Right now, people were really very much uh, concerned that he might have changed. The city education, the city uh, you know, lifestyle might have brought a change in him, but he was the same man. The old women of the house, she even went, go, uh, went up to the extent of running her hands on his chest to ensure whether he was wearing the sacred white thread, that is the Janeu, right? So he was wearing it, so he had still the firm belief in his culture, in his tradition, in his religion, and he was the same courteous boy, right? Now in this stanza, we learn a lot about Ranga's, uh, Ranga as a person. Please start reading. Ranga was a worldly wise young man. He knew when he when it would be to his advantage to talk to his someone. He rightly assessed people's worth. The narrator was resting in the afternoon when the Ranga came to his house with a couple of oranges in his hand. The narrator regarded him generous, considerate fellow. He thought that it would be fine thing to have him marry, settle down and be of service of the society. He asked Rangappa when he planned to get married. Ranga replied that he was not going to marry just then. He needed to find the right girl. She should be mature enough. Secondly, he wanted to marry a girl he admired. He was not in favor of arranged marriages prevalent in society. If he could go not get a girl of his choice, he would prefer to remain a bachelor. Okay. The narrator now, had, uh, had Ranga had a different perception of marriage. First of all, we understand that he was a thoughtful young man, he was a wise young man. So uh, he went to, he knew how to take advantage, uh, when it would be to his advantage to talk to somebody. So he relied, rightly assessed people's worth, means he, he understood the worth, the worth of the people. Now the narrator was resting in the afternoon and Ranga came to his house with a couple of oranges in his hands. 
the narrator regarded him a generous considerate fellow so he thought that it would be a fine thing to have him marry settle down and be of service to the society he wanted that and the narrator expected that ranga would prove to be an uh, efficient and an eligible husband a nice husband so he asked ranga pa when he planned to get married ranga replied that he was not going to marry just then he needed to find the right girl and that too the girl should be mature enough she should be of a suitable age he wanted to marry a girl he admired he was not in favor of the arranged marriages prevalent in the society if he could not get a girl of his choice he would prefer to remain a bachelor so he had a different opinion he believed different from all other villagers he believed that getting married was celebrated on the same tree and he believed that he should not get married till the time he gets a suitable girl at the same time the girl should be mature enough to reciprocate back to his love right now the narrator was not very happy to uh, learn his perceptions of marriage and he wanted to he wanted to uh, that ranga should get married at the earliest so the narrator felt distressed at this decision of remaining a bachelor so in his heart the narrator as a well wisher of rangappa he made up his mind that he is going to make ranga fall in love with a girl and make him get married and settle down in his personal life right so how the narrator manipulates things to change his mindset how the narrator you know, makes him fall in love with a girl he's attracted to was a girl and how he it's everything is planned by the narrator very well so that's all the story about ranga's marriage right please continue aman the narrator felt distressed at ranga's decision to remain a bachelor ranga left after chatting for some time the narrator made up his plan that he would get ranga married he thought that rama rao's niece ratna a pretty girl of 11 would be the most suitable bride for him he was from a big town and he knew how to play the veena and harmonium he also had a sweet voice the next morning narrator went to rama rao's house and told his wife to ask ratna to fetch some butter milk for, from his house when ratna came he requested her to sing a song on this friday he was wearing a grand sari the narrator was the narrator had sent for ranga to while he was singing a song ranga reached the door he was curious to see the singer and peeped in it the the light coming in the room was blocked seeing a stranger there ranga stopped abruptly she stood at the distance her head lowered ranga repeatedly glanced at her he he said that his arrival had made her stop singing and offered to leave but he didn't leave ratna overcome by his shyness and ran inside okay the next morning the narrator went to rama rao's house and told his wife to ask ratna to fetch some buttermilk from his house now first of all we need to understand who ratna was ratna was rama rao's niece the girl has lost her parents in an accident and she was brought up by his uncle but she was a nice girl a sweet lovely girl at a very small age of just 11 we can make out this story was perhaps written at the time when the girls were married at a very young age right so uh, when ratna came he so ratna was living there uh, now with rama rao in rama rao's house so uh, narrator went to his house and he saw this girl ratna he felt this was a suitable girl for the house for uh, rama for ranga so he tells rama rao's wife to send ratna to his house to say uh, to fetch buttermilk at the same time he had asked ranga also to come to the house now he wanted that both of them should see each other and meet each other because he really liked uh, ratna as a nice girl and he really liked her for ranga so the narrator also sent for ranga now he asked ratna to sing a song ratna was a good good vocalist she knew how to play musical instruments so she started singing a song Now Ranga reached the door. When Ratna was singing, Ranga came and he stood at the threshold. Right? He was curious to see the singer and he peeped in. The light coming in the room was blocked. Seeing a stranger there, Ranga stopped abruptly. So Ranga stopped. 
and uh, Ratna stopped singing, right? Because there was a stranger, so Ratna also stopped. Now there was they were standing at a distance, but uh, you know Ranga somehow felt that because of his arrival, the singing had stopped. So he said, "Okay, now I will leave because of my coming. The singing has stopped, so I will." But he doesn't move. So the manner in which he was observing the girl, he was uh, you know, appreciating her innocence, her uh, lovely voice, her melodious songs. That was very much clear to the narrator that the that Ranga was attracted towards the girl. Right? Shall we? Let's move on. Continue, Karo, beta. Ranga asked the narrator who. that girl was he was all he also expressed the hope that he was not married the narrator noticed his excitement and said that he was married a year ago the narrator noticed the signs of disappointment on ranga's face ranga left after some time the next morning the narrator went to a astrologer shastri ji and told him to keep everything ready to read the stars he tutored the astrologer in all that he wanted him to say then he escorted ranga to the shastri's house and shastri ji praised astrology as a ancient science he asked ranga's star ranga did not know after making some calculations shastri ji said that ranga was thinking about a girl to the narrator's question as to who that girl was the shastri said that he had the name of something found in the ocean kamala pachi moss pearl or ratna the precious stone okay now this was something which was pre planned by the author by the narrator when the narrator found that somewhere there was you know that she he was clicked somewhere by the girl's innocence by the girl's melodious voice now one smart as he played that at the same time when ranga saw this girl he said the narrator questioned him who this girl is so ranga said what does it matter who she is right there is no point but anyways uh, the otherwise also the girl is married right so there was a disappointment on his face and that was very much visible which narrator could easily notice it now throughout the day he found that ranga was not well he was giving that disappointed that unhappy kind of a look so ranga questioned him what's the problem you are having a headache so at the same time it is you see now ranga was actually somewhere he was lost in his thoughts when we are deep diving into our thoughts where every time we are thinking somewhere that gives that uneasy that sick kind of a feeling there is on our face also so he uh, now the author or the narrator was every way kind of poking him so that he should come up with his um, feelings and you know for that girl so he questions him uh, that you are having a headache so at the same time he tells him even i used to have such a kind of a headache when i was searching a girl for you but that did not be case with you so what's your problem she said okay come let me take you to the shastri ji a shastri ji you understand is a village priest or a village shastri Who was involved in all religious things, and he could read out the stars in astrology and what matchmaking and everything that all he did. Now Ranga, when he takes, uh, when Ranga is taken to the Shastri ji, one thing to keep it in your mind is that before they visit Shastri ji, the narrator had met him early that morning. Early that morning, before he takes Ranga along with him to the Shastri ji, narrator had met him all alone, and he had explained the entire thing to Shastri ji. at what he has to speak and how he has to present in front of ranga now ranga when he went there so shastri ji tells they are introduced and uh, at one point the narrator was you know making a mistake uh, he was about to say that they met that morning but shastri ji was smart enough and he covered up it now ranga questions not ranga the narrator questions him that young boy has something heavy upon his mind can you please tell your uh, read the stars and tell us what's wrong with him so shastri ji told that there is some kind of a problem what problem is there he says that something has gone wrong uh, there is some girl uh, on her mind maybe the girl is and he says that the girl this girl's name is associated with something starting uh, something connected to the ocean maybe kamla i mean like kamal flowers grows in 
water. So kamla, pachi, moss, it's again a plant. Pearl or ratna. When he says ratna, so then it just says ratna. That is uh, Rama Rao's niece. And, uh, but no, how is this possible? Girl is already married, right? So Ranga, though he was somewhere, he was, you know, influenced by Shastriji. Somewhere he had that impact. Oh God, he can read out my mind, right? So Shastriji simply said, I don't know. I'm not saying anything. I don't know the name of the girl, but there is definitely a girl and the girl's name is associated to something found in the ocean. So it could be Kamla, Pachi, Moss, Pearl, or Ratna. Now, both of them now left the house of Shastriji. Ranga and the narrator. On the way, there was Ranga, uh, Ratna's house, Rama Rao's house. So the narrator goes inside and comes back after a minute. And he noticed that there was more curiosity on the author's face. The curiosity was because um, the narrator thereby confirmed that Ratna was not married. Right? Ratna was not married and thereby the both of them, the two of them, they get married. Chale, we are going to read out the last section. Aman, please continue. The next morning. The next morning, the narrator went to the astrologer, Shastriji, and told him to keep everything ready to read the stars. He tutored the astrologer in that he wanted him to say. Then he escorted Ranga to Shastri's house. Shastriji praised astrology as an ancient science. He asked Ranga's stars. Ranga didn't know. After making some calculations, Shastriji said that Ranga was thinking about a girl. To the narrator's question uh, as to who that girl was, the Shastri said that he had the name of something found in the ocean, Kamla, Pachi, Moss, Pearl or Ratna, the precious stone. Okay, this explanation I've already given. Chalibita, please continue. The narrator remembered that the name of girl in Rama Rao's house was Ratna. He asked if there was a, any chance of their negotiation bearing fruit. Shastri gave a positive response. There was a surprise on Ranga's face and some happiness as well. The narrator observed that the girl was married. He noticed that Ranga's face had fallen. On the way, he, on the way they passed by Rama Rao's house. Ratna was standing alone at the door. The narrator went in alone. He came out in a minute and gave the news that the girl wasn't married. He remarked that whatever Shastri told them had turned out to be true. He asked Ranga if he had been thinking of her. Rang Ranga admired it. So Ranga was married to Ratna. Ranga admitted so and Ranga was married to Ranga. Okay. Now, my question to you, everybody. See. Well, uh, what do you think? What was the reason why Rangappa here tells the narrator, why narrator tells Rangappa that the girl was married? I mean, he could have simply asked him that what are, uh, are you interested for the girl? Are you, do you want to marry her? And he wanted that he should marry the girl. So why he was turning and twisting the entire story? Why he was, you know, creating that confusion that the girl was married? What was the reason behind that? All those who are sitting quietly with their cameras on, off, Please switch on your cameras and then revert back. Switch on your cameras fast, everybody. Athar, your camera is off. Aman Goya, Ankur Mishra. Kamen, uh, Aman Goya, switch it on. Ankur Mishra, your camera is still off. Ankur Mishra, I am going beginning the camera on. Karne ke liye bol rahi now, next time you switch off your camera, I am going to remove you. Ahan, Ahan, am I audible to you? Yes, ma'am. Aditi? Yes, ma'am. Give me the reply for this question. What was the reason why the narrator twisted the entire plot? I mean, why he told Rangappa that the girl was married a year ago? 
a year before the girl got married what was the reason behind that ma'am narrated it so so that ranga feels more desperation for the girl okay can anybody else give me the answer for that athar ma'am because narrator wanted to see him more happy after no but, but by telling this that the girl was married he could not be more happy he was really sad because of that and he was sad said then he uh, asked ranga to that he she was married or not then he tell that she was not don't you think by this ranga for the author's intention was basically you know to uh, enable ranga come up with his feelings in a better man he definitely wanted to see that desperateness in uh, rangappa related to that girl that how desperate he was to get married to the girl at the same time he wanted that he should express his feelings because the, the because rangappa had told narrator that he is not interested to get married right now perhaps he feels that till the time he is of the suitable age and he finds a matured girl who could reciprocate back to his feelings then only he would get married right so in a way directly or indirectly the uh, rangappa had conveyed to the narrator that he would not get married so that was perhaps a reason why the our author is a very smart uh, smart man he wanted this boy to settle down personally he wanted him to marry ratna but directly telling him that this is the girl and marry her or you can just have a word with her he makes him fall in the love and then at the same time to bring you know his curiosity his desperateness to bring out his desperateness for the girl he plays this game and he tells him that the girl was married a year before am i clear with this answer please be very considerate yes, all things those things come up in the exams especially when i am talking about the objective you will not be able to do it if in between you do not question yourself why and how <laughs> things happen right chaliye am i clear with this part yes ma'am 